Thanks very much. Welcome to Good News. Hope you've had a good week. So, what's been going on? Over in Russia, this newsreader was caught in the act. <laughs> Did anyone else see Stevie Wonder parking his car on the news? <laughs> Is it me? Or do some people really fear the north of England? A woman from Otley has been telling how passengers screamed in terror as their plane tried to land at Leeds Bradford Airport. <laughs> no! Not Leeds! <laughs> what else? Well, it couldn't be a week in the news without sexual overlord Eamon Holmes telling us how he makes love. In, out, you know the score. <laughs> And finally, there's nothing better than just watching people lose it. <laughs> George Osborne. <laughs> well, he's right. He denies it, right? He denies it. Nevertheless, it's come back because. She's been told her phone was hacked. <laughs> when the, the Sunday mail. <laughs> They got so into it, they forgot they were on the news, they just started making jokes. This story, a few years ago, about George and this woman who clearly no longer takes cocaine, judging by her size. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> no. Right. Anyway, George Osborne, George Osborne will be dogged by this. And the lawyer... The mo Beautiful. News. Well, a special baby has been born this week. Events have been taking place around the world today to mark the birth of the seven billionth person on the planet. Seven billion people, and still my brother can't get a girlfriend. <laughs> As ever with a big story like this, the Daily Mail message boards were heaving with madness. <laughs> Utter lies! There are not seven billion. If there are, let's have their names. Go on, prove it. <laughs> every person in the world right now! <laughs> Mind you, not everyone was angry. Some were just confused. Somewhere in the world, a woman gives birth every 80 seconds. We have to find that woman <laughs> and stop her. <laughs> Scientists are worried about the increase in population. With potentially billions more people, pressure on water, food, oil will grow. A billion go to bed every night hungry. Don't laugh, madam! <laughs> it's the weirdest thing I've ever Hungry! It's the funniest thing I've ever seen! <laughs> There's too many of us! The planet can't cope! Is anyone else thinking what I'm thinking? We need to start bumping people off. <laughs> but who? Don't you worry, I've drawn up a list. Number one, people who play ringtones out loud on buses. <laughs> who still do impressions of Austin Powers, off you fuck. People <laughs> who wear sunglasses indoors, unless you're blind. People, <laughs> people who say, I am what I am, OMG, LOL, Reem, I'm real, I'm real, I'm real. <laughs> really? Because I thought you were fucking imaginary! <laughs> and finally, anyone who doesn't like this. <laughs> Blighty Occupy London was hitting the headlines. Protesters could remain camped outside St Paul's until the new year, after authorities offered to halt legal action. Aside from the controversy about vicars losing their jobs and evictions, I couldn't take my eyes off the protesters. They gave some amazing interviews. This guy started off by moaning about the lives of the rich. They still have their lavish dinners. They still have their um, uh, chauffeur-driven roles. They still have their butlers and their mansions. All good points, but then he really lost it. We're at home with our top shop beans, like celebrating <laughs> each bean on each plate for our children. <laughs> top shop beans? <laughs> no wonder his kids are upset, he's feeding them jumpers. <laughs> My favourite protester was an Australian man called Francis Firebrace. This old fella is wonderful. You can't hold me because I'm not doing any harm to anybody. I'm an elderly man. Come on, give us a bloody mouse a bit. Come on, guys, I love you guys. Isn't that great? I love you guys. <laughs> Just goes to show, if you're going to protest, you don't have to be violent. OK, boys, which one of you fellas have I got to fight? <laughs> or if your eyes out 
and stick him up your didgeridoo! <laughs> but I still love you. <laughs> Staying in Oz, in royal news, the Queen's been on a trip down under. The Queen and Prince Philip have arrived in Australia for a 10-day visit. They'll be based in the capital, Canberra, but will also travel to Melbourne, Brisbane and Perth. Did you see the Australian media coverage? Now, was it me, or were their reports a little bit morbid? The Queen will arrive in Canberra tonight for her 16th visit to Australia, possibly her last. Her last <laughs> trip to Australia. On what may well be her last ever trip. Her last trip here. Probably her very last time. <laughs> I hate to use the word die, so I won't. He didn't follow her around dressed as death. <laughs> it didn't end there. Judging by her hand gesture, this report was having a pop at how Liz smells. The Queen touched down in Perth last night. <laughs> oh, it's like a dingo's ball bag. <laughs> Not all of the reporters were rude. This guy has to win the award for saying exactly what you see. The Queen wore lilac and had fresh flowers in her hat. The Duke of Edinburgh didn't. Later on, she'll be waving, <laughs> using her hand. <laughs> the Queen and Prince Philip were there for ten days and they met some pretty interesting people. One of my favourites, the BFG's daughter. Basketball player Elizabeth <laughs> Cambridge towered over the royal couple as they continued their apparently triumphant Australian journey. I love the moment when the Queen sees her. Hello, you holy shit! Bloody hell! She's higher than Prince Harry. <laughs> Let's climb her. <laughs> the biggest scandal of the trip was definitely this. In Brisbane, 22-year-old Liam Warriner appeared in court after he bared his butt cheeks to the royal motorcade and mooned the Queen. Classic Aussie behaviour. It's the Queen. I better flash him a shit pipe. <laughs> So, how did the royals react? I bet they were terrified. The prince gave me a nice wave. It was lovely. Hello! It's like a yawning Wookiee. <laughs> Have you seen the latest craze hitting British playgrounds? Marbles is turning tots into gamblers. <laughs> Have a look at this. Children as young as seven have run up debts of between 20 and 30 quid to fellow players. <laughs> Marbles! Just say no! <laughs> Drunk kids will be in rehab. My name is Sarah and I am a marbles gambler. <laughs> it got so bad, to pay my debts, I had to put Eagle Pickle on the game. <laughs> She's a good little slut, though. Makes me money. <laughs> A bit full on, Sarah. Yeah, it's just how I get when I'm pimping. <laughs> Have you seen where they're getting the money? They're stealing cash, DVDs, and computer games. Don't steal from your parents. Surely the best way to make money, blackmail. Take a photo of yourself naked, put it in your teacher's bag, threaten to go to the papers. <laughs> Easy money. <laughs> Over in Russia, there's an alarming promotion in a sex shop. Casanova 69 is offering kids and adults the chance to win an unspecified gift from the chain if they can answer one simple question. Where do babies come from? That's right. A Russian sex shop is offering children an unspecified gift if they can tell them where babies come from. I mean, it makes obvious sense, doesn't it? Remember when you were little? How much you wanted something from a sex shop? <laughs> I remember Christmas. Dear Santa, Please, can I have some crayons, a bike, and a vibrating butler? <laughs> I never got that bike. <laughs> I'm worried by this news. If sex shops are trying to appeal to kids, how long before we start seeing children's TV shows like this? Hi, kids! Hi, <laughs> Mr. Dildo! <laughs> Where's Mr. Dildo hiding today? Is he in Mummy? Is he in Daddy? 
<laughs> where, oh, where could Mr. Dildo be? Technology news. The iPhone is having a wee bit of bother in Scotland. It created quite some excitement among techno geeks when it was launched in London less than two weeks ago. But now the new iPhone 4S is instead creating confusion. Is it a nice day? Let's see what it says. I don't know what you mean by, is it NAS Tita says? <laughs> That's right, the latest iPhone can't understand Scottish people. Track this phone's in Glasgow going, I do not know where the nearest smack dealer is. <laughs> I will find one when you have finished school. <laughs> to be honest, it's little one of the iPhones confused. Scottish people are asking it some pretty weird questions. Do you like men? This is about you, not me. Remind me to clean my ass cheeks once I've taken a dump. <laughs> Remind me to kill myself. <laughs> to be honest, the iPhone cock-up is nothing compared to Nikon's face recognition camera. If you think misunderstanding a Scottish accent was bad, look what their camera told this lady when she took a photo. Did someone blink? <laughs> Whoa. But someone made a camera that was racist! <laughs> From technology that struggles with humans to humans who struggle with technology. It's estimated that 8.7 million adults here in the UK have never been online. 42% of those people are aged 55 or over. So, in order to turn this around, a BBC scheme called Give an Hour was set up to get pensioners online. Fair to say, some of them quite scared of technology. The biggest fear is when you move that mouse, what's it going to do? <laughs> what's it going to do? It's not just the mouse. I heard my computer's full of RAM. Someone's put a sheep in my computer. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are they trying to get people like him online? The challenge, 250 internet users getting 250 internet virgins online in just an hour. Well, that is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> Not the technology, but protecting pensioners from the ridiculous amounts of internet porn. <laughs> it's everywhere. Imagine that. Let's do some online shopping. Type what you want into Google. OK. I love fudge. <laughs> Bloody hell. Hey, forget about food. Let's get you a lovely present. Okie dokie. I want a pearl necklace. No, no, you don't. <laughs> um, let's get you a scarf. I don't want a scarf. I want a pearl necklace. Stop saying that. <laughs> but despite the dangers, I think it's great that pensioners are getting online because otherwise they'd miss out on things like this. <laughs> Over in New Zealand, check out this massive crime story. Police say a large dog attacked and punctured four tyres before taking off. Holy shit! <laughs> a dog is chewing tyres. Now, you're probably thinking, Russell, why are you showing me this? I'll tell you why. Cos you're about to see some of the most mind-blowing CGI known to mankind. A South Auckland police sergeant was patrolling the Mangadi Street. Bruno attacked his vehicle, biting the tyre, puncturing it. The cop changed the tyre, but when he returned, the bull mastiff cross again attacked his tyre, again puncturing it. Another sergeant came to the officer's aid, but he too had his tyre attacked and punctured. It's like Avatar, isn't it? <laughs> Mind you, if you think what he did to the car was bad, check out what he did to the police officer. <laughs> Now, a cracking story about Snoop Dogg. The rapper Snoop Dogg has gone to some extraordinary lengths to broaden his fan base by personally appealing to a Welsh farmer to come to his concert. This story is brilliant. A bloke called Ian Neal grew the world's biggest turnip and Snoop Dogg invited him to a gig. Shout out to my homeboy Ian Neal in Cardiff for breaking the world's records for the biggest vegetable. Man, I want to tell you something, man. When I do my show in Cardiff, I want you to come backstage and see me, cos I do vegetation myself, and I want to know your secret so I can show you my vegetables and see if you can grow that into a real big vegetable. <laughs> I 
wonder what Snoop could be growing. It's so great, isn't it? He's literally surrounded by cannabis. So you're probably thinking, I doubt this old farmer went to Snoop's gig. Well, guess again. Not only did he go, he had quite the adventure. I got my VIP pass with me to show my friends. And you met him last night? Met him last night and I had a smoke with him. I don't smoke, <laughs> but he offered me one, so I took one. I'm hoping that's just tobacco. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I'm wearing this shirt? <laughs> I'm off my tits! <laughs> I feel like I'm in a fruit bowl! So, how long did you have with Snoop? Ten minutes. There, yeah. was, there was four of us all together in my party, and we had ten minutes with him, yes. And what, what else did you chat about? No idea! <laughs> His stuff was so strong, my shirt started talking to me! <laughs> I love how he sums up the concert. Yes, it, it was an experience. In fact, I'm still deaf. Mind you, if he's deaf, at least he couldn't hear this. Come on and let me know. Should I stay or should I go? Go. <laughs> and take your pubic lice with you. <laughs> he crucified that classic song. <laughs> Over in Scotland, here's a report about an eating competition that ended in disaster. An Indian restaurant in Edinburgh has been criticised after its world's hottest chilli competition left two people in hospital. Hospital? <laughs> How was the chilli contest? My ass doesn't work. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. If only this story had happened in New Zealand. Imagine the graphics they'd have shown in the news. <laughs> Now, this is the part of the show I genuinely don't know anything about. There's going to be a mystery guest who's been in the news, and I have to figure out who that person is. So please welcome my mystery guest! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. The plume has just come down. Hello. Hello. I'm Russell. Nice to meet you. Hello. My name's Ian. Nice to meet you. Can I sit here? Uh, yes, please, yes. So, Ian, um, I imagine it has something to do with gardening. No. Nothing to do with gardening. <laughs> Good curveball. <Yeah. laughs> We're in a greenhouse. Um, has it got something to do with your hat? No, that's health and safety reasons. Right, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, health and safety, making you dress like a bullock. Um, <laughs> Good laugh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a beautiful laugh. It was like a, a kind of laugh, a man who should be next to a fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, fire. Finger. That's what? close. Fire's close? Yes, yes. Are you the fire starter? No. <laughs> Twisted fire starter? <laughs> no, no, no. Do you smack your bitch up? No, no, no. You'll piss yourself when you get it. Nice. <laughs> I love these interviews. They're not like Parkinson's. No, they're not. No, they're not. You're going to have to help me I'll out. give you another clue. OK. Oh, that's an infrared. Do you shoot things at night? Are you no, a no. champion of... Why have you got an infrared sight? What's that? Oh, is that one of those things you go... <laughs> I am the current 40th and 41st world pea shooting champion. Ah, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Would you like to have a go? I'd love to have a go. Back a bit. <laughs> 12 foot. 12 foot, 12 inches. Yep. Yeah? And we fire peas at the target. OK. Every now and then you get a bad pea. And, in fact, pea selection is key to the... Uh, <laughs> you seem a like a lovely selector. bloke, but that is one of the dullest things that any man has ever seen. <laughs> hey, you are lovely, but <laughs> pea selection is a very important thing. <laughs> The ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. Oh, that was very crap. close. But I know uh, what, what you we can do. do. <laughs> oh, I've dropped me I, pee. I can't hold it. I've peed on the stage now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ronnie, right show me how it's done. Okay. Let's make this interest. Actually, hang on a minute. This will be like a really Which weird I? recreation of how. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Finny! 
it! <laughs> oh, nice, nice. And again, I'll exactly say, actually, not necessarily like Robin Hood. Can you do it like this? <laughs> 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 you, you can't put a champion off, you know. I can't put a champion off. Well, you could give, Let's it, do a, it, again. give it a good go. Hey, careful. Look, he can't! He can't! I'm shot the shot the shot the Do it again and touch my dick. Come on. Come on. <laughs> no, really. Right. Right. Do it like that. Oh. You can't put a champion on. <laughs> Pat it. No, no, go downstairs. <laughs> go on, rub it. Really rub it. Really rub it. Come on, we are trying it. Come on, do it. No. We won't go. Yeah! Right. So, uh, the first question that leaps to mind, why the Viking helmet? Uh, health and safety. Like you keep saying that. Well, it's, well, there's people shooting behind you as yeah. you're trying to shoot. You know, they're putting you off, so it protects the back of your neck. Well, I get that, but why the, why the horns? Um, it was just given to me as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's a backstory. Who gave you that as a gift? My daughter. Oh, lovely. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, 26. <laughs> My, uh... It changes every year. <laughs> that's 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 on telly and forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoyed that. Nice to meet you. Thank you very Gentlemen, much. Gentlemen, please, please go up for my mystery. Yeah. Russell. What? Um, I was on the news uh, for something else actually as well. I um. Ian. I uh. Hey, Ian. I tr I trimmed a bush. <laughs> I, tr what? I trimmed a bush into uh, an obscene shape. A tudgery <laughs> type. Todgery type shape. So you turned your, your bush into a penis? <laughs> yes. That's not, that's not often been done. <laughs> yeah. What made you do that? Uh, I couldn't do a dog. Please give up to my mystery guest. You've woken up grumpy today. You've got nothing on this guy. Confused and angry. An elderly man in a morgue in South Africa. Led away from the premises after he was found alive in the mortician's fridge. <laughs> Workers thought he had died the day before. Imagine waking up in a morgue. <laughs> be horrific. Mind you, if that were me, I'd have to take the piss. When they pulled me out, I'd freak them out and do the thriller dance. <laughs> What I want to know, how the hell did this happen? His family asked the morgue to collect his body after they could not wake him. How shit are his family? Granddad! <laughs> now he's dead. Whack him in the fridge. <laughs> Granddad will never sleep again. What do you want for dinner? Red Bull and cocaine! <laughs> This week's story is about a young man called Patrick Hughes. It's wonderful. Born without eyes and with a tightening of the joints that prevents his limbs from ever straightening, Patrick has been blind and crippled from birth. We just asked why us. We played by all the rules. We worked hard. We just didn't understand. Kisses for day. That heartbreak began to fade even before Patrick's first birthday from his first moments at the family's piano. By his second birthday, he was playing requests. Can you play You Are My Sunshine? You know, okay, we're not going to play baseball, but we're going to play music together. And that was, that was really exciting. He's, he's my hero. I've told him before uh, what he goes through. It's taught me that I don't really have any complaints. God made me blind and unable to 
walk, big deal. He gave me the ability to, the musical gifts I have and the great opportunity to meet new people. How would you describe your disabilities? Not disabilities at all, more abilities. Lovely, wasn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching Good News. Good night.